Greetings, YouTube. Today I'm going to review Pyramid of the Dragon from Small Niche Games, a Labyrinth Lord adventure uh, for four to six characters of fifth to seventh level. Obviously, you'd probably want four seventh level characters or six fifth level characters. Now, one nice thing about the name of this uh, module is that I don't have to worry a whole lot about revealing any secrets because there are dragons and there is a pyramid. There you go. It does what it says on the tin. So, this entire adventure is set in and around a swamp. That's the only limiting factor I think that this might have. And that if you don't have a swamp in or near your current adventuring environment, you know, your GM's like just not near there, you know, your game isn't set there, this might be a little more difficult to convert to your setting, but it would be possible. You'd have to change a few structures here and there, swap out some of the different humanoids, but I still think you might be able to use the module. Now, it is written for the Labyrinth Lord system, but that is basically a very basic form of Dungeons and Dragons, so it wouldn't be difficult at all to use this with any version of D&D. You just would have to go in there and uh, change the stat blocks for the creatures that are presented to you, or, you know, wing them. Because a couple of them are fairly unique to this setting, so you probably come up with this, something on your own very in, in, with no difficulty whatsoever. Um, but the adventure itself, the plot line, the, the NPCs, things like that, all of that could be used without a, without a hitch. So the story starts, it opens in a very cinematic way with the, the, the player characters seeing a battle between dragons, the image I just showed you. And that's a really good uh, blocking. You know, it's just like, boom, and there you are. Very well thought out. And that is also the impetus for the entire adventure. The repercussions of that battle, the politics between dragons in the area, um, the ramifications of the outcome, things like that. And all of this plays out from that start. The adventure has one nice thing, is that there's a number of different ways that a GM can get the players to the adventure. There isn't, There are no rails here. There are a number of different ways of getting in to um, the whole storyline, and I like that. I, I, it, it, if I may use the term, it had a new school feel to it, even though this is aimed at an old school style of play. I can remember those first edition modules, they were very linear. All right, there weren't a lot of options. Um, the uh, as it has a nice village to play with. It has a random encounter section. It's twenty different encounters, uh, and each is has a proper name. It has proper descriptive text. It has pertinent um, stat blocks for each monster you're going to encounter. So it's very handy. And uh, what I thought was very humorous is that a number of them are ripped right out of the Princess Bride. Um, you know, it, it was a wonderful little homage to the adventure in the, uh, you know, in, in, in the swamp. Quite humorous. Um, there is uh, a nice selection of non-player characters here. Both good guys and bad guys. There's an opposing adventure uh, party that you're going to come up against. There are some nice uh, support characters that can definitely be used to branch off into different directions after this adventure is over. There are runes to explore. There's the swamp to survive. There are dragons. There's a pyramid. There's a dungeon uh, aspect, dungeon delving aspect to this. This is a really well-rounded adventure. And I think it really allows everyone in the party to have their moment in the spotlight, and it doesn't seem contrived. The thief's going to get his time in there. The, the cleric and the wizard and the fighter, they're all going to get their time in the spotlight. And it's not going to seem like they blocked off this little time segment and said, this is when you're going to be on the stage. Because there's a number of different ways you can solve the problems. It's just that there are some optimum ones, and that's where the characters would come into four. Um, I think there's, a, there's quite a bit of replayability in what the setting is. The adventure itself I don't think is really replayable, but what they give you, the pyramid, the swamp, some of the ruins they describe, all of these things could be used at a later date to foster future adventures. And um, you could very easily use the, the village they use in here, of uh, Holden, I believe it was called, as a center jumping off spot 
for exploring the swamps in case the characters are interested in what they find or they find themselves in need of something from a swamp at a later date, this would be a perfect place to come back to. It's already laid out for you. You've got the work done, you know? And it wouldn't be hard to buff up that random encounter list to use it again. So, I was very impressed by this. And I have to say, I, this is the third module from small, small niche games I've read, and I've enjoyed them all. But this is the one that really captured the old school vibe for me. It felt, to me, like it was 1980, and this was the adventure that we were going to run. Even though, like I said, it had a kind of a new school, more open, dynamic structure than that was available back in the first edition era, when you know a lot of the modules were being used, they were tournament play modules, so you couldn't have a lot of variety. You know, they they, they had to be kind of linear. So I definitely recommend this. It was a fun read. I think it's going to be very useful for anyone running Labyrinth Lords or any version of D and D with almost no work whatsoever.